Darwin Nunez, Liverpool's number 9 and Uruguay's leading striker, is a polarising character in football. He is well into his second season in the Liverpool shirt, but many still ask the question, is Darwin Nunez actually any good? The short answer is yes. Now let me get into it. The Uruguayan signed for Liverpool in the summer of 2022, with his arrival coinciding with the departure of Liverpool legend Sadio Mane. Now this, along with his price tag, expectations were always going to be high. Not only that, but Liverpool were just off the back of winning the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, whilst losing the Champions League final to Real Madrid and missing out on the league title by one point. Many were expecting Liverpool to sign reinforcements in the upcoming summer window and challenge once again. But just a few months before joining the Reds, Liverpool fans were introduced to Darwin Nunez when Liverpool played Benfica in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, where they came out victorious after winning 6-4 on aggregate. In a goal-filled tie, it was hard not to take notice of the then Benfica number 9 Darwin Nunez, who scored in both legs against Liverpool, with another two goals that were ruled offside. I remember at the time, there was already hype around Darwin with how well he was doing that season, with clubs like Liverpool and Manchester United being linked with him. It was obvious from the two games against Liverpool that he had quality with his finishes for his goals, which were excellent, even the ones that were offside. In his final season at Benfica, he scored 26 goals and provided 4 assists in 28 games, while scoring an additional 6 in 10 in the Champions League, whilst also having the best conversion rate in the Portuguese League. These factors just added to the already high expectations, especially with Man City acquiring the signature of Erling Haaland in the same window. Many people talk about the chaos that Darwin brings, and we saw that instantly during his time at Liverpool. His debut for the club came in the 2022 Community Shield game, where he came on as a substitute and scored to help Liverpool seal the victory against Manchester City. He then got a goal and an assist in a draw against Fulham, but then received a red card in the following game against Crystal Palace. His first season for Liverpool, some would label as disappointing, with many questioning if Darwin was a flop. But other more optimistic fans picked up on the similarities of his first season with Benfica, where he was underwhelming, but then he exploded in his second season. The stats would back this up as he had 26 goal contributions in his first season and 38 goal contributions in his second. Now if we look at his first season for Liverpool, he had 19 goal contributions, but this season he already has 20, with a huge part of the season left to go. At the end of last season, Darwin even came out himself to voice what some fans were saying, admitting that his debut season was underwhelming and hoping that with a bit of luck, his following season would be an improvement. Another thing to remember is that last season, Klopp had his worst season for the club and pretty much the whole team was disjointed, so it would be unfair to put all the blame on Darwin. This season, Darwin is part of a Liverpool team that have the best attack in terms of most expected goals created, even breaking the record for most expected goals created in a Premier League game against Newcastle. Darwin himself has an expected goal involvement per 90 minutes of 1.21, which is the highest in the Liverpool squad, followed closely by Salah's 1.18. Darwin has also built a strong partnership with Salah, but already this season we've seen them combine to score on many occasions. Liverpool's attack is definitely at its best when Darwin Nunez is in it, and it is definitely noticeable when he's absent. Let's use the Fulham game in the Carabao Cup semi-final as an example. Liverpool were training 1-0 at half-time, ended the first 45 minutes with fewer shots on target than the opposition. However, after the second half introduction of Darwin and Cody Gakpo, they turned the game around in just 15 minutes with Darwin assisting the two goals. And despite coming on in the 55th minute, Darwin was top for numerous metrics in the game, such as the most shots on target, most chances created, and most touches in the opposition box. So when fans say that Darwin Nunez brings chaos, it's not just some meme because just with him being on the pitch, he generates goal scoring opportunities for fun. However, it's also impossible to not mention the frustrating part of Darwin's game. This season, he's had the most shots per 90 out of any Premier League player but with a conversion rate of only 9% and he's also massively underperformed his expected goals in his time in the Premier League. And you can never feel 100% confident when Darwin is through on goal even in one-on-one -on -one situations. One moment that sums up Darwin in a nutshell is the chance against Toulouse at Anfield, where he did really well to go past the last defender before also beating the goalkeeper, but he is still unable to score and instead hits the post despite it being an open goal. On top of that, in his last 17 games for Liverpool, he's only scored 3 goals which is underwhelming, although he has provided 6 assists during that time. Whilst being wasteful, he's also been extremely unlucky at times. Not only has it taken him the second fewest games to hit the post or crossbar 10 times in the Premier League after Luis Suarez, he's also hit the woodwork at an astonishing rate of 0.36 times per 90 minutes. 
Already this season, we've seen the best and the worst Darwin has to offer. The 2-1 win away at Newcastle has been one of the highlights of the season, but the result would not have been possible without Liverpool's number 9. Coming on to score a brace in the final moments of the game with two unbelievable finishes. But on the flip side, this diluting away game where Darwin accumulated 9 shots but failed to convert any and Liverpool went on to draw that game. But despite all the noise surrounding him, Darwin has had a good season so far. He has 15 goals and 12 assists for club and country. He is part of a team that are top of the Premier League and are challenging in all competitions. And his nation are second in the Comdebol World Cup qualifiers where they have been Argentina and Brazil in the same year for the first time since 1960. Darwin scoring in both matches. Even the greatest footballer of all time is a fan of Darwin Nunez. No, but in all seriousness, his overall play has also improved drastically this season. Looking at his numbers alone, Darwin had 4 assists for Liverpool last season and he already has 10 this season which is the most in the squad, more than the likes of Trent and Salah. Even with the eye test, Darwin's hold up and link up play looks more polished and his weight of pass is impressive and explains how he has been racking up assists. It's also clear to see that Darwin is capable of being an elite finisher with the goals away at Newcastle and even in his finish when he ended his goal scoring drought against Burnley. But it does feel like it's the easier chances when he has more time to think those are the chances that he tends to miss. But I do think that this is more of a mental issue than a physical one and perhaps his confidence is still not 100%. A few months ago, former Liverpool striker Daniel Sturridge also voiced the same opinion by stating he just needs to be coached. He needs to do training sessions where he's making those runs at pace and practicing particular types of finishes when he's doing it at match tempo because it does seem like he's not composed or relaxing. Despite everything, Darwin still has the unconditional support from the Liverpool fans who are constantly chanting his name even when he's not on the pitch. And you can tell that Darwin appreciates the patience and the support from the Liverpool fans. Another positive is that Darwin is turning 25 this year so he still has time to improve and grow as a player. He already has all the other ingredients required to be a superstar such as pace, physicality and his tendency to never give up. But of course there is no denying that Darwin must improve and become more clinical especially with how competitive the Premier League is and the fact that Liverpool have already missed out on the league title by one point twice in recent years. But overall, and the way I see it, yes Darwin will miss opportunities that will frustrate you, that might even cost you games. But for many of those opportunities, I don't think many footballers would get these same chances as Darwin does, where he creates with his pace, physicality and movement. In general, a big positive is that all of Liverpool's forwards are different profiles and all offer something unique. This goes for Darwin too, whether he plays off the left or down the middle, I believe that Liverpool's best starting eleven includes him in the team. I can understand some who don't believe in Darwin, but for me, his positives far outweigh the negative.